Welcome to the Planning Commission. The date is uh, Monday, July 22nd. Will everyone please rise for Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. The first item of tonight's agenda is the actual approval of the agenda. Does anyone have any... Uh, comments or concerns? If not, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Moving on is the minutes or the approval for the minutes for the June 24th, 2013 meeting. Does anyone have any comments on those? If Mr. not, I will. Mr. Chairman, move to approve the minutes for the June 24th, 2013 meeting. Second. Motion second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? I think we're all here, if I remember right. Okay. So moving on, the first public hearing tonight is uh, the subject of the meeting is the Bryant Lake Land Use Guide Plan Chain. The location of the project is south of Willow Road and west of Bryant Lake Drive. And the request is a comprehensive guide plan change from park open space to low density residential on 0.89 acres. And with that being said, with the proponent of the project, please come forward and tell us a little bit about your project, please. And could you also state your name uh, spell your last name and give your address as well, please. Sure. Tom Strom, representing Homestead Partners, S-T-R-O-H-M. <clears throat> and it's our intent to um, ask for the approval of a comp plan amendment for uh, from open space to uh, low residential, low density residential on about 0.9 acres of the uh, 9.3 acre parcel, of the Duncan property. And... Um, Right now, currently, there's an agreement between uh, James Duncan and JMS Customs Homes. Uh, luckily, one, one homeowner will be, I think, pretty excited to have a beautiful home on, you know, 0.9 acres buildable and an overall nine-acre lot that butts up to uh, Bryant Lake. Okay. Anything else to add? Um, uh, not at this time. All right. Thank you, Mr. Strom. I appreciate it. Ms. Regina, you have the uh, staff report for us tonight? I do. Thank Good you. evening, Chairman Stoltz and members of the Planning Commission. As the applicant stated, it's about a 9.3 acre parcel that was guided parks in open space. Um, the history of um, the guide plan map as a whole, uh, the city initially in the late 60s and the 70s and, and even in the 2000s, uh, we've really taken a broad brush look at how to guide parcels, parks, and open space. Typically it was reserved for parcels that the city owned or areas that um, abutted lakes, wetlands, that clearly um, were lakes or wetlands or creek corridors. This particular property, because it was adjacent to Bryant Lake and appeared to be all wetland, um, the city took a broad brush stroke to it and colored it all parks and open space green um, without looking at it, um, I guess, really specifically and looking at the high land that was buildable. So um, the applicant is asking um, only for 0 0.89 acres um, to be guided as low density residential. And again, that's the area that's, I guess, high and dry. Um, the other portion of the land would be um, guided parks and open space still. Um, staff does recommend approval of the guide plan change um, for the point eight, nine acre site. Uh, we do have some uh, conditions that were, um, that we would like uh, prior to building permit issuance uh, to be added to the motion. And I can just go ahead and go over those one by one. Uh, prior to building permit issuance, the city is asking the applicant to apply for a city right of way permit for water service connection. And this also might require a security deposit asking the applicant to deed all necessary right-of-way and easements to the city, complete a wetland delineation, and revise based on the field evaluation conducted on July 17, 2013. The plans should also be re revised to show the correct wetland buffers based on the approved wetland delineation and assessment. 
This would include the new basin indicated north of the driveway. Also, a conservation easement would be required over the wetland and wetland buffer as required by city code. The trail and boardwalk location for access to the lake must be indicated in the easement document. The driveway should be evaluated to avoid wetland impacts to the fullest extent possible. Land alteration permit is required from the city, which will be also subject to the nine mile watershed district requirements. And also the driveway needs to be outside the wetland and wetland buffer. City staff has been working with the applicant and um, they are aware of these additional conditions. If you have any questions, I'd be more than happy to answer. Um, I don't think so at this time, commissioners. Do you have any questions? Well, I guess the, the only, only I guess the only question I would have is: Are these conditions um, beyond the awareness? Are they acceptable to the applicant? Yes. Okay. Yeah, for city staff. Yeah. Okay. This is perfect. Did this used to be owned by the city? Or uh, no. So private property. Somehow private property sold. owner. This Correct. Way. It was never owned by the city. And was the whole area at one point owned by one private owner and when they split it up? I'm just wondering yeah, how it's it, It's a legal lot of record and it's been owned by a property owner for years and years. Um, as far as I know, the city has never been in possession of the property. Um, if you look at the, um, at the plat map for the surrounding subdivision, it actually shows a cul-de-sac kind of dipping into this property, giving the property access to the public road. Um, so I'm not sure why it was um, all, I guess, coded green as parks and open space. Our best assumption is it was, um, you know, we didn't have the detailed um, tools that we have today and it, it was just colored in green. Okay. Any other questions for Regina? Thank you, Regina. Mrs. Strom, can you come forward for just one second, please? So just to be clear, you, you were prior, uh, you have prior notice of this and you were aware of all these changes and you're okay with everything? Yeah, I think we um, received it maybe this afternoon. Okay. Or Friday, yeah. Okay. Yep. And Great. we're working on um, the wetland delineation and uh, having some correspondence with our consultant today. So, and all the other changes we're aware of and working towards uh, working with the city and everybody else. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yep. Uh, seeing that this is a public hearing, is there anyone out in the audience that has any comments or concerns? Yes, ma'am. Please come forward. Uh, state, spell your last name and give your address, please, for city record. Thank you. My name is Mary Ellen Wright. I live at 11228 Willowwood. Um, my property is adjacent to the um, nine-acre parcel. Uh, we purchased our property, our home, um, from Mr. Duncan, who is the applicant in this um, proceeding, in uh, January of 2011. Prior to us um, purchasing the home, we came to the city because Mr. Duncan had offered uh, the 10 acre, 10 acre parcel or the 9 acre parcel as well. And it, we had come to the city, and I'd been informed, and I have several notes, that the, the, the unplotted land was um, park and recreation. And so the specific rural. land that we're talking about tonight? Correct. Okay. The entire parcel. And it had always been that way. Um, my question, or our question, my husband is um, Curtis Wright. There. Our questions are, is, is so why now? And the other conditions that you have stated, um, I've been made aware of, um, such as the city right-of-way, um, the wetland delineation plan, the septic, the soil test, I believe, would have to also be be done. Okay. My questions are the following. Um, could you d define what low-density housing is officially to me? I'm sorry, can you say that again? Can you define what low-density housing is? Regina, can you do that? Yep. Uh, Low-density means um, it's available for uh, homes from zero to 2.5 units per acre. Uh, so it's residential use. Um, In other words, we couldn't put an apartment complex there or something like that. But it's, we have an but it's not single family. It, it can be single family. Um, as long as your density is, it's possible for, if it's a large um, piece of property, um, 
Well, it's it point eight nine acres is what right. So correct. this would. Um, they're only they're not proposing to subdivide the property it they're just asking to build on a on the property um, kind of as is build what build one home one home okay one home. okay so then um, um, question can I ask if, if it's been consistently um, how, it's zoned rural correct uh, That's what space. I've been told by the city every time I've come. Park open space. It's, See, that's what it it's is currently zoned, zoned right It's now. guided park open space, but zoned real, correct? That's correct, yeah. Okay, so what are the parameters for building a single-family home under rural zoning? The, it, a single family home is permitted on a rural zone property as long as it meets the setbacks from when the property was initially approved, when the lot was of record was initially approved, and this was approved back in the 80s when we allowed a five acre minimum lot size. So as long as they meet the minimum lot size, which they do, and the setback requirements that were granted um, back in the 80s, they can construct a house according to those requirements. Yeah. Okay, so um, let me see if I un check my understanding here. So the, the rural setbacks, which would be 50 feet in the front, 50 feet in the back, um, the sides totaling 150 feet total, is that what would be applicable to this parcel? It would be uh, the setbacks that were allowed in the 80s when the, the lot was created. I'm not sure if those are the current or the... Um, if the current requirements match up with the requirements in the 80s, but that's something that uh, the applicant would have to show on their building permit as meeting. The, the applicant is requesting a guide plan change only. They're not requesting any variances or waivers from city code as far as for the structure for the, um, for the home itself. So why not single family versus low density? Well, there's no zoning change here being requested. That's why I'm getting confused a little bit, I think. They could legally construct a house in the rural zoning district. It, it's not required um, that they change the zoning in order to construct one house. Yeah, you're right. It's From the, ex the confusion that you may be experiencing is kind of exactly what I've been experiencing throughout this two-year process because um, I, I've never even been you know, made aware of that were initial um, setbacks that might have been different in the 80s. So this is the first I'm hearing of that. I had been told previously that the rural setbacks were the components that would negate the ability to build. Um, and had we known that, we would have purchased the property. <laughs> so you can appreciate our... Um, hopefully our uh, lack of understanding. So we're looking for clarification primarily. Um, just what really is the clarification um, and what is the intention of the Duncans at this point? Um, because low density, from what I'm learning, is very different than single family, the potential. And so I would hate to see a two an apartment complex go up there. So let's... Let me take a whack at this. So we're not changing. The zoning is staying the same. That's not, that's not changing at all. And it is zoned low density, correct? It's zoned rural, zoned which rural. allows for, it does not allow for multifamily. Um, it allows for single family residences or agricultural type uses. Right. Um, the and, so, and that is not changing. Right. So in order to construct. Just so that you, so I'm trying to. That's a given? Is that not changing? They, they could be seeking to change that, right? It's yeah, I not think it, part of the request tonight. It's not changing at this point in time. That doesn't say they couldn't come back and ask, but that would come back in front of the planning commission. It right. would need to come back in front of the planning yeah. commission. Right. So in order to construct on the property, um, the guide plan and the zoning need to match up. So 
in a rural zoning district, you cannot build a house if it's guided parks and open space. It has to be guided, um, a compatible land use, um, which is low density residential. So that's our only request tonight is to uh, change the guide plan in the high and dry area so that it's compatible with its zoning district. So what's happening is there's a guide plan change that's saying it's, it's parks and open spaces, Correct. but it's zoned rural. Correct. So those two things really don't kind of match if you want to put a house on the property. So what they're trying to do is to change the guide plan to, uh, to low density. So then the low density works with the rule, which is so the rule. So does the, the size of the parcel work with the rule of the zoning? Is yeah, it compatible? I, they're compatible. Yeah. Rural is five acres, though, isn't it? The lot for the zoning district, the minimum lot size when this lot was created was five acres. And so that, okay, and so what has happened between, um, say, last November when I was with, at the city um, that, because I was told it, it was five acres at that point and not buildable. So what has happened officially yeah that's why they're here tonight um, with a request to make the guide plan change so the guide plan overrules the zoning the they five have, acres they, they would have to be compatible. they have to be compatible Doesn't, don't look at it as one overrules the other it's just they have to they have to be coexist and, and match right so okay, initially so, the applicant came so into aren't you this making it incompatible um no not if the person who owns the property which they have a right to do Right. Within within the zoning, they have a right to do what they want to with that property. Okay. And so they're looking at it saying it's a rural place. We want to put one house on that property, but right now there's a guide plan change to be parks and open, and that that's what doesn't mesh. So they're trying to mesh everything together. And what the city was saying at the beginning is they kind of did this broad strokes and accidentally, I guess you could say, put an open park on there, and it should not have been open park. No. It should have been. It should have been okay. the guide plan. Should have been rural. Is that, okay. is that helping at all? It's getting clear. Okay, very good. Could you please reread the conditions? Or could I get a copy I of the conditions? I can certainly get you a copy. Oh, that'd be great. Thank you. So if all of these, these criteria are met, then they'd be able to build. So this criteria is something that the, that the city is saying before we change it, these are some of the conditions that we would like to have happen before we change it to the guide plan change from open oh, to Oh, so rural. you wouldn't be taking a vote tonight? Then this would be... Um, we will be. If, if the commissioners feel obliged to go ahead with what the city is recommending, then we will take a vote to change okay. this from open parks to, to rural. And the owner would have to comply with these conditions. I see, because I see it says prior to building permit Or low issues. density, I'm sorry. Okay, yeah. all right. I don't have any other questions. Do you have any other questions? Oh, one more question. Could you tell me the um, the dock? Because um, I had asked the city, are you familiar with um, the regulations as to the length of the dock? Because we were told if we had wanted to purchase it, there would be no way that we would be able to put a dock there. And I just want to know if that's accurate tonight. Something about 75 feet in length. Um, it must not exceed that, or 400 square feet. They would have to meet code in order to. Um, Is that code? Build a dock. Um, the dock itself, uh, I don't have the measurements on it on the plan um, that's in front of me. Uh, Mrs. Strong, do you have, to, have that I'd information? Have more, are you building? Are you going to be putting a dock on that property? Would you mind coming forward, please? The intent is to put a dock at the lake to create a boardwalk. Um, and the intent is to place a conservation easement over about, you know, eight and a half acres, uh, the 9.3 minus the buildable, so conservation easement over the remaining unbuildable portion of the property. Right. 
and um, create an easement for this boardwalk out to the dock through that conservation easement. So they are, they're not asking for anything special. They're just Correct. kind of stating what they're going to be doing. They're not asking for any variances. Anyone else could do, you know, I'm assuming the same type they of thing if they to. wanted to. Is they have to abide within the city right. uh, they ordinance. Meet ordinances. Yep. And if you wanted to do something extra, extra longer outside those city ordinances, they have to come back to this commission to be able to say, these are the reasons why we want to make it longer. And then we would take a listen to that and decide, yes, do we want to do that or no, we don't. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh, okay. complete sense. Thank you. You've been very helpful. Um, I would just add just one question, if I if I may. You've asked some interesting questions, um, but I want to make sure that we are clear on the concern that you may have about this development that may have led to the questions. So, um, is there some overriding concern that you have, or was it more a matter of just clarifying the context? Well. To be perfectly honest, the, the inconsistencies in the answers that I got from the city when we were purchasing the home that we live in, and we had first right of offer on this nine acres. Um, so we we done what we thought was our due diligence, and the, um, the reality of um, what the city led us to believe is that this isn't ever going to happen to put a single-family home up there. And... Um, and that's one of the reasons we wanted to purchase the home is, is a in potential investment um, or to protect the property. So that inconsistency is really why I'm here. And um, secondly, um, the DNR, we had invited the DNR out to do some cleaning up around the lake. And, and I had asked the gentleman from the DNR to take a look at this. And he had huge concerns because if there's a, where our driveway is, it's a very deep very deep, um, steep slope, and probably the only place you'd be able to put the driveway in. And um, and according to the plan, that's and it's it's very very wet there. So my concern was is um, how can you build, really, um, when indeed the city informed us that we really can't. And I'm not concerned about building, but. I'm concerned about the rules and regulations, and can things be changed, um, you know, at any point in time. Right. Mr. Rue, have you had a chance to look at the property at all, or do you know anything about this driveway and this hill by chance? Uh, well, yes, we have looked at this um, a while ago, because this has been brought up before. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the exhibit that's shown there, shows uh, the contours and, and grading limits in order to uh, to get that driveway in there. Based on the fact that we, uh, the delineation that occurred last week, there's a, there's a wetland right in the middle of that um, triangular buildable area uh, that will have to be avoided with the driveway. So they're going to have to revise, and that's part of the conditions, they're going to have to revise the driveway uh, layout, both the grades and the, and the the slopes adjacent to that wetland and squeeze it in there and may have to have retaining walls or something to, to avoid that the wetland as well as the buffer area around that and that's so you, that third bullet point there at the bottom yeah. the third yep. from the bottom what well you as you see on the graphic it's there's that culvert that's under the driveway right mm -hmm. just to the north of that culvert that's where there's a uh, triangle you look at the contours there's a triangular shaped piece there that's a that's actually defined as a wetland so and that was determined last week with the with the field work, and that that's uh, condi that's why the conditions are laid out the way they are. Is that was so the city engineers their job is to go to the property and to take a look at it based on the plan and be able to sign off on it, saying yes, I think you can do this, or no, we, we need to protect you know this piece of property, and therefore you need to do certain things in order for us to sign off on it. So that's what the city is doing is they're taking a look at it and saying, oh. yeah, it's close, but I need you to do a little bit more, and we're getting okay. it part of the public record tonight and in the motion that that the commission will vote on to make sure that everyone's okay and comfortable with it so the city's basically saying we'll sign off on it if all those things are met in order to protect that piece of property and protect the land and protect the environment Certainly. and mr strom is saying yes we agree mm -hmm. with those and we will make sure and we fix that um and we abide by the rules could i um i have this could you show me where that area is um this is a what do you call this probably ought to do it all. Yeah, why don't you stick, if you don't mind, you can, thank you. John, I appreciate it.
is, this is that wetland that you were. This is the wet. This is the wetland right here. Yeah. Okay. All right. So then so the right driveway well, the driveway is shown right here. Dri driveway is shown here. What they're going to have to do is, is this wetland is in the middle here. They're going to have to pull this, these grading limits back and build a retaining wall or something to, to avoid the wetland as well as the buffer area. There's a buffer area required around the wetland. That's the high point right here. Have to have two, they'll have to have two sites. They'll have to have a primary and a secondary site. And as long as they can prove that there's two sites, then that'll, that's one of the conditions that we'll have to uh, clear as well. Two sites, yeah. They would have to Good. We answer all your questions. Yeah, you did. You're okay. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks for your comments. Is there anybody else out in the audience that has any comments or concerns? Okay. Commissioners, do you have any <coughs> questions or comments? Okay. Uh, with that, I will entertain a motion. Mr. Chairman, move to close public hearing. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Mr. Chair, move to recommend approval of the guide plan change from park open space to low density residential on 0.89 acres based on plan stamp dated July 5th, 2013, and the staff report dated July 19th, 2013, and subject to the following conditions. Prior to building permit issuance, apply for a city right away permit for the water service connection. This may require a security. Deed all necessary right of way and easements to the city. Complete wetland delineation and revise based on the field evaluation conducted July 17, 2013. The plan should be revised to show the correct wetland buffers based on the approved wetland delineation and assessment. This would include the new basin indicated north of the driveway. A conservation easement would be required over the wetland and wetland buffer as per city code. The trail and boardwalk location for access to the lake must be indicated in the easement document. The driveway should be evaluated to avoid wetland impacts to the fullest extent possible. Land alteration permit is required from the city, which will also be subject to Nine Mile Creek Watershed District requirements. The driveway needs to be outside of the wetland and wetland buffer. Second. Um, one thing just to be clear on the first bullet point apply for a city right of way permit for the water service connection this may require a security deposit just to be clear yep. you know, the word everyone okay with that missing. okay second thank you <laughs> <laughs> all in favor say aye. Aye. aye aye any opposed great you can move forward to the project thank you very much thanks for coming down tonight too folks with that being said we'll move on to a planner's report regina do you have anything for us I do not have anything additional to add. Okay. Very good. Members report. I just have a couple of slight items for the uh, light rail. Okay. I unfortunately wasn't able to attend last month's meeting, um, but it was a continuation of talking about the different technical issues uh, throughout the route with the different bridges, tunnels, looking at those aspects through basically crossings over existing um, trails, freeways, any kind of crossing over existing pathways. Um, there's been a um, supplemental um, draft environmental impact, impact statement released. Um, this is based on the actual alignment has been modified slightly from the um, locally um, preferred alternative. And um, so they have to look at the different aspects of that. That is available um, on the Environmental Quality Board's website. That's EQB, elephant, quail, baby, dot state, dot MN, dot US. 
Um, and that um, items for that uh, comments are due by August 12th, 2013 um, to Nanny, uh, N-A-N-I Jacobson. Uh, it's N-A-N-I dot Jacobson at metrotransit.org. Um, did anybody get a chance to go to the Eden Prairie Open House? No? No, ma'am. All right. Um, the next meeting this Thursday, uh, we'll be discussing that supplemental DEIS, and we'll also be talking about the scope and costs of um, the project. Okay. Very good. Anything else as far as member reports? Thank you, Katie. Appreciate that. Any continuing business? Any new business? If not, I'll entertain a motion. Move to adjourn. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.